The space race was a competition of economics, technology, and politics. In the 1960s, the United States and the Soviet Union were both seeking higher ground. Each country was stockpiling nuclear arms and advancing missile technology. The Soviets had been the first to orbit both a satellite and a human. They were clearly ahead. I'm NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. For five years, I served in the U.S. Congress on the Science Committee, which oversees NASA. Written on the wall is a scripture, where there is no vision, the people perish. On May 25, 1961, President John F. Kennedy presented Congress with the most inspirational vision in history, and he gave it a deadline. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. This vision was placed in jeopardy when, in 1967, the Apollo 1 fire killed Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee. And then in 1968, the uncrewed Apollo 6 mission also failed. Still, the Soviets planned to fly around the moon as early as the end of 1968. So NASA made aggressive and even dangerous plans. The plan was to skip two Apollo test flights, drop the moon lander, and go directly to lunar orbit with humans. At a time when nobody had ever flown more than 850 miles above the Earth, NASA planned to fly 240,000 miles to the moon. NASA considered the risks. The Saturn V rocket had never flown a crew before. Its previous mission was a failure. Critical components were not ready, such as mission control, communication networks, software and instrumentation. Trajectories and navigation were not even understood, let alone calculated. An astronaut crew and a flight control team were not trained, and there was no ability to recover the crew if they returned at all. Finally, without a moon lander, Apollo 8 would have only a single engine. It would need to be reignited many times to get to the moon, to enter lunar orbit, to change orbits while at the moon, to exit lunar orbit, and to fly back to Earth. In the previous mission, that single engine failed to reignite even once. If it failed now, our astronauts would be lost forever. The optimum Earth-Moon alignment would place Apollo 8 in orbit around the moon in just four short months. A dangerously aggressive schedule given all that was needed to be accomplished. Even more worrisome, our astronauts would be in lunar orbit on Christmas Day. Any failure would wreck Christmas for the entire nation. NASA worked overtime and NASA was dedicated. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit. We have. We have lift off. We have cleared the sky. On Christmas Eve, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders were the first humans to orbit the moon and the first humans to see an Earth rise above the moon's surface. As they orbited the moon, they made their last broadcast before attempting to reignite their single engine to return home. This broadcast was seen or heard by one out of every four people on the Earth, including the people behind the Soviet Union's Iron Curtain, where Christmas was still illegal. This was their message. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. And the Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. 
and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called these seas. God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. Today, we are still striving for higher ground. This time, we're doing it with our international partners, including Russia. This holiday season, Remember NASA's daring feat of 1968. Think about the people who risked their lives and the people who gave their lives to preserve our freedoms, including the freedom to celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy new years, and ad astra.